Okay. So, Tharsis is one other huge prominent structure on Mars. It's this very large bulge sticking out the side of the planet. It's where Olympus Mons is, where the Tharsis Montes volcanoes are, Arcea, Ascreus, and Pavonis Mons. Um, it's adjacent to Valles Marineris, the Thalmausia region. So you've got this huge chunk of land, of crust, sticking off the side of the planet. It, there's just, uh, it, in terms of elevation data, so again, red and purple are very high elevation, uh, and this is, and, and white is you know, even higher. So you've got these uh, volcanoes that basically stick up through the atmosphere. You're pretty much, uh, well, there's very little atmosphere above you by the time you get to the top of Mount Olympus. Just a couple of other views showing um, Tharsis in um, perspective to the rest of the globe. We've got nothing really comparable to this on the Earth that is that, just sticking out so much. Um, I guess the take home message is it's likely that Tharsis, I mean, there are a couple of different possible explanations for how this large bulge developed. Uh, and some of it is fine detail as to whether or not you know, layers are building up on top or layers are pushing up from below. Those are kind of two different uh, alternative uh, explanations. If layers were building up on top, you might expect Tharsis to eventually kind of push down on the land around the side. But if Tharsis is being pushed up from the bottom, you might expect the Tharsis to be pushing up against the land that's around the side. But in either case, it's probably driven by um, a large uh, plume of mantle material that's coming up from lower levels in the, uh, in, in, within Mars. How many of you are big lava lamp fans? Okay. So uh, if you've ever seen a lava lamp in action, you basically have uh, an understanding of what's going on with the mantle plume. The blobs in the lava lamp, why do they go up to the top of the lamp? Heating. heating where? There's a light at the bottom, a hot incandescent light at the bottom, heats up this um, polymer kind of stuff, makes it, uh, um, it allows it to be melted, but it also decreases its density. Um, and since it decreases its density, it flows to the top of yep. the, whatever the solution is, it like water. Right. Colored water. Yeah. And then what happens to the blob at the top? It cools. cools off. What happens to the density? It it, density decreases. Eventually it gets denser than water. And then what will happen to the blob? So the we'll sink. Okay. So you get these psychedelic little blobs uh, going up and down through the, the colored water. That's essentially the same kind of process is going on. What plays the role of the hot incandescent bulb on Mars or in the Earth? The core. The core is hot, heats up the material at the bottom of the mantle, and it becomes plastic, it becomes less dense, uh, it's going to rise to the surface. Eventually it will cool off as it radiates heat off to the crust, which radiates heat off into space, and that mantle material will eventually cycle back down. To the, okay. You get a mantle plume when you have a lot of that activity going on in one place. And on the Earth, um, actually, I should I should have reviewed what slides were here. On the Earth, um, we see this kind of process going on in the formation of the Hawaiian Islands. Okay. So uh, the Hawaiian Islands are forming on top of what is probably a plume of mantle material coming up. And it's that volcanic eruption that has led to the creation of, of, the, volcan of the Hawaiian Islands. We think probably the same thing is going on uh, with Tharsis. Okay, so Hawaiian volcanoes. Um, there's a hot spot. And currently the big island of Hawaii is over that hot spot. And so where do you expect Volcanoes National Park to be? It's on the big island. Okay. 
as you go through the Hawaiian Islands off from, from the big island of Hawaii off to the northwest, you get to older and older, progressively older islands. What has uh, been going on, presumably, is that the Pacific Plate has been moving over this hot spot. So we got the hot spot here. I should make it hot. Um, leading to uh, mantle material coming up. As the Pacific Plate goes over, whatever part of the Pacific Plate that's over the uh, uh, hot spot at the current time is where all the volcanic activity is and the island building is going to be happening. As the plate continues to move on, uh, so for example, Maui in the recent past was probably, recent meaning, I don't know, uh, a few million years, was over the hot spot and was in a period of mountain building, island building. As the plate moves away, moved Maui away from that hot spot, what happened to volcanic activity on Maui? Lesson. What happened to the balance between island building versus erosion? Erosion. Erosion's going to start winning out. Okay. So as you go to uh, progressively older and older islands, there's less and less volcanic activity and more and more erosion. And uh, if you continue, there are even subsurface mountains that probably were islands in the past that have been completely eroded away. Um, so we've got this kind of conveyor belt. Now with Tharsis, again, we think it's kind of a huge volcanic, uh, a huge mantle plume. But if we're talking about Mars not having any plate tectonics, there is no moving of the crust away from the hot spot. Like, so, um, as, so, like, so the closest analogy we have to Earth through our Olympus moms is Mauna Loa. Yeah. yeah. They're both shield volcanoes, or Mount Fuji is also a shield volcano. So, um, and, you know, um, basically, well, let's see. Take home message here huge uh, mantle plume under Tharsis for billions of years, probably leading to the uh, creation of this huge bulge on the side of the. which really is kind of a huge bulge. Uh, that's actually Olympus Mons in profile. Um, so, why are these volcanoes so large? I mean, they're much larger than Mount Fuji or uh, Mauna Loa or any of the Hawaiian volcanoes. Well, because if there's no plate tectonics, uh, it's just going to keep going up, and there's no erosion either. Erosion is very low. The lava um, building is going to be in the same place for billions of years, and so you get these massive structures built up. I won't go through all the details of the rest of these slides, but it's kind of curious that this huge bulge is kind of smack dab on the equator of Mars. I mean, this mantle plume could have been anywhere, right? And so is it just chance that it happened to be on the equator? Um, probably not. Um, let me just give you the take home message. There's, this, there's these different kinds of polar wander and we've already kind of talked about magnetic polar wander that the the direction of the magnetic field and the location it, you know, can move around over time. Uh, true polar wander, though, is um, when the actual spin axis of the planet can actually tip over. So let's, let's say that this mantle plume was not on the equator. Let's say it was up at, uh, in the northern hemisphere somewhere. You've got this ball spinning around in space. What happens if you stick a big wad of gum on the ball um, in one location that's not directly where the, where the ball is spinning? That will move to the, where, like, the equator. It's going to unbalance this spinning ball, and eventually that wad of gum 
is going to be uh, the, um, along where the, the ball is spinning around, which is the equator. So it's quite likely, and there's some evidence, I won't go into it, but it's quite likely that, that Tharsis actually developed somewhere else at a different latitude than around the equator, but the massive weight of what was developed there actually pulled the spin axis of the planet over, and so now Mars is more stable by having this big wad of gum sticking off the side of the planet at the equator. That's basically the take-home message for true polar wander. So um, this will remember this because we'll come back to this when we talk about whether or not we have evidence for a past ocean on Mars. I mean, clearly, if the whole planet is tipping over, we at some point, for some of the questions we're going to look at, we have to take that into account when trying to interpret what we see today. And I think I'll just 